Okay, saw number three is the Shindawa 490. I'm choosing this saw to work on next because, first of all, it's got fuel in it. I'll drain it out, of course, but that means it's not leaking, so the fuel lines might be okay. I don't see wetness anywhere. This is missing the pool starter rope, so I'll grab a pool starter out of one of those other cheaper saws and knock by your building. Clean this one up, pull the side cover off, and give it a good once over. This one may be, uh, again, knock on wood, an easy fix once we get that pool starter uh, set up. So stay tuned. You may be asking why I would bother with the Shindawa or with other Husqvarna's um, or other saws. This is actually a really good brand. It's out of China, uh, not China, Japan. Um, I have some of their bars and chains and other saws. And uh, it's actually a good quality product. But maybe not the same name recognition that Husqvarna has or still has. So still a good saw. Start by pulling the side cover off just to see how it looks underneath. It's been sitting out a little bit. There's some rust on the exhaust here. Compression feels decent. We'll obviously check that before going too, too far. But just want to take a look at what's underneath here. I have to start wearing gloves when I work on these saws. Okay. I'm just pulling this off so it doesn't get in the way or cut me while I'm working the rest of it. So. But I see oil down in the oiler area there, so it's a good sign. Again, a little bit of rust in here, but I'm sure that'll work right out as soon as we get this thing fired up to do. Um, well, didn't check compression on this one because the pull string wasn't there, but there is resistance at least spinning it around. So that's a good first step in the stall that I was unable to check compression on when I bought. Unlike the Husqvarna and steel, these use Allen keys or wrench heads to pull the covers off, so it's not scrunch friendly, I'll say. And they're not captive like in some of the pro saws where these screws stay with the cover. Less tendency to get lost that way. But again, Japan makes some great product. I think this saw. If I can get it running and cleaned up, it'd be worth 250 or 300 bucks. Um, and if that's the case, if I sell this one and the Husqvarna 136, I'm um, break even on two saws, and then we'll see where we go from there. I'm not sure what this piece is kind of hanging up a little bit. I'm not sure if this is something else up here or not. Okay, so this part appears to unscrew. Lefty Lucy, I feel like that's coming loose now, so the top should pop off. Again, I've never pulled one of these tops off before, so this is new to me as it is to you right now. We'll see what, okay. Air filter cover, so that screws into the air filter. Air filter's a little dirty. Do I see sawdust on the inside of that? That's no good. To figure out what's going on with this air filter needs an extra sock on it or something, but that means it was sucking sawdust in to the engine. Hopefully it didn't cause any damage. So you gotta pull the spark plug off before the rest of the cover comes off. Again, this is my first Shindawa chainsaw to be pulling apart, so I'm learning as we go here. Patience, folks. It's all right. Nice brown color. Now this cover should finally, there we go, come off. Uh, webs and whatnot. Next we'll pull this 
cover off over here. Let's take a look at what's missing as far as the starter. I don't know much about Shindawa, so I can't even fill this empty airspace with anything knowledgeable about Shindawa. And you always get into these projects and you hope there's something simple. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you realize there's a reason people parked it, as they say, quote unquote. And hopefully it's just one of those the string broke and it sat because somebody else had a saw and then they just forgot about it or whatever, and it'll be an easy fix. Okay. The rope is still there. That's good. No compression right now because obviously I have the spark plug out. But I'm pretty sure we can find a rope for that and a pull string from one of the other saws. I'm not planning on rebuilding and get that back up and running. So I'll pause there. Okay, so what I did is I just took this rope, pushed it through the hole. There's still plenty of rope on there and then stuck it through an old still. It's actually my Magnum 460 hand, chainsaw handle there. This doesn't fit right, but at least we can get a compression reading and see how it, uh, it goes. There's a little oil leak. Right in here. I'm not sure if it's bar oil. It most likely is. It's pretty dirty in here. This saw has seen some use. Um, and we'll definitely clean up the air filter and get a good compression reading. But for now, we'll stick this recoil cover back on. Let's see what happens. And we're just putting this cover back on for now so we can kind of do compression tests and spark tests to know if we should go any further with the saw or if it's not worth fixing. And then if it runs good, we'll check the oiler and clean up everything and go from there. These Allen keys. Counts check spark. Let's see if this cover side should be on and off. Let's see. Run is right here, stops there, so this should be run. Okay. See good spark. Step one, check. Okay, compression test. Let's see how this goes. Wasn't a big enough knot, I guess. Let's try that one again. Okay. I think compression 150. This thing is not holding for some reason, but it's holding. It's getting good compression, so I think we're good there. It's like if we're buying a cheap Amazon compression tester. Okay, throw this thing back together now. Okay, I don't know about the cleaning instructions for this, so you can separate this air filter. A lot of stuff inside there, so I'm not sure the quality of these air filters you're letting sawdust in. But we'll clean it out regardless, and then uh, set it up to run again. So I'll do that off camera. Don't know if this next step is going to get me in trouble with those in the Chanel world out there, but I'm going to put just a dab of grease around this joint where the two halves of this plastic meet. Try and help seal up a little better. See if that keeps any sawdust out a little more. Again, sawdust and engine, not the best thing. So, okay, if this is wrong, you can yell at me in the section, the comment section. So I'm going to try it's a little bit around the face where it hooks into the carb. Okay, back together.
No, like I said, there is fuel in here. I haven't smelled it yet. But it might be a good idea to drain that fuel out, put some fresh fuel in. Take a smell. No. It smells a little old, but. Yeah, see the fire with that fuel in there. Okay. That being said, we're ready to see if the Shindawa starts up. That's a winner right there. Cleaning here before we get this fired up. Um, I drained out the bad, the old fuel, put in some bar oil. Just want to clean this up a little bit and then give it a real run with some good fuel and fresh bar oil. So make sure the oil ports are clean and clear. Alright, so I went through, cleaned out the oiler slots and everything, and put some grease in the sprocket on the end of the bar here. So put this chain around the sprocket first. Then through the bar. This adjuster is built into the side cover. Let's make sure that lines up. Put this in there. Okay, I'll start with new fuel in here, put the jerk position. Yeah. <laughs> 